Hey everyone, welcome to the community call about the game of NFTs, which is a, a proposal that is currently on that on the forum. And this proposal is about uh, having a game of NFTs like we had in the past about uh, the game of stake, the game of chains. And uh, it will be testing uh, the interchain NFTs uh, that we will talk today. And uh, to talk about this topic specifically, we have uh, Susanna Evans and uh, Ethan C. Uh, and uh, if we can start from uh, Ethan C for uh, a brief introduction. Okay, sure. Uh, can uh, can everybody, can you can you guys hear me? All right. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Welcome, uh, Cosmonauts. Um, thank you for tuning in to this uh, community call. Um, uh, as the uh, key uh, proposed uh, writer, uh, we put up this uh, proposal for a game game of NFTs uh, at the Cosmos uh, Forum, and this is uh, this game follows uh, pretty much the same, uh, a very similar uh, format as the, uh, the previ previous games. <clears throat> The game uh, is basically divided into two phases. Uh, the first phase is a uh, incentivized test nets uh, phase, and the second one is a hackathon. So the second phase is mostly uh, focusing on the application and the ecosystem uh, develop development side. Uh, and the first phase, uh, as with the other uh, previous games, focuses, focuses on the correctness and robustness of the uh, the ICS721 protocol itself uh, and its impl implementations in actually there are two uh, currently there are two implementations one is the Golan implementation uh, hosted by hosted by the uh, BNJ team in uh, here in Shanghai uh, and the other one is a Rust implementation uh, for the Cosmos uh, contract based chase uh, I think it's uh, been Being developed by uh, Stargaze. Do you hear me, Ethan? I think there is uh, some connection trouble with Ethan. Maybe you can try to disconnect or reconnect. Susanna, do you hear me? Um, Juno. Yeah, I can um, hear you. Okay, thank you. Is mainly because uh, ICS721, uh, very similar to ICS. 20, SS20, uh, supports the cross-state interaction of a very fun fundamental token type in the ecosystem. So ICS20 uh, uh, supports the transfers and interaction of fungible tokens in the Cosmos ecosystem, Cosmos network. Uh, and ICS721 supports uh, transfers and interactions of non-fungible tokens in our ecosystem. And the, the development of this protocol, the specification itself, and the, uh, the two implementations are actually being funded by uh, the uh, Interchain Foundation. Um, as, as we all know, in the past year, I believe, uh, if we take uh, Ethereum as an example, in that uh, uh, it is one of the most, probably the most active uh, commu developer community uh, in the blockchain world. Uh, I believe more than 60%, I mean, at least uh, more than half of the new EIPs are uh, centered around uh, NFT. So a lot of innovations are happening in the domain of NFT. Be as, because this is very, I mean, it's easy to understand because NFT uh, is one of the two major asset types 
in any blockchain ecosystem, right? The first is fungible, the next is non-fungible. And as a non-fungible, uh, and also non-fungible tokens support um, a much wider of variety of use cases than fungible tokens. Because non-fungible token, you can just think of it as a uh, on-chain data structure that can be used to model uh, arbitrary complex, arbitrarily complex business logic, right? Um, so, uh, so when you and then when you think about the different chains that already uh, have the NFT capabilities, uh, having uh, ICS 721 to enable the interaction between these chains is as important as ICS 721 has done for fungible tokens. Uh, because when when now once we have the ICS 721 protocol, we can have uh, fungible uh, liquidity uh, managed across different chains, and different tokens can be transferred to uh, useful applications like um, uh, DEX and and uh, DeFi applications. And with NFTs, uh, you can think of uh, NFT marketplaces, NFT rental marketplaces, and licensing markets, and all sorts of uh, liquidity management or DeFi, ki DeFi kind, kind of innovation uh, enabled chains that can attract liquidity and enrich the interactions uh, between different blockchains in the, in the Cosmos network. So this, what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to get to is really that ICS 721 is as fundamental an application protocol as ICS 721 and um, and that's probably one of the reason one of the reasons why ICF is funding this effort. So in that sense, uh, when we have this game uh, for for the first phase in the first phase of this game, we are trying to we will be try, be working together. I mean that all the teams that join the game will uh, by goes going through a set of tasks and interesting games and competitions will. Uh, establish the correctness and robust robustness of this fundamental application protocol, ICS protocol. So that's why we we think this protocol and its implementation is so important for for the community uh, that it warrants its support from the most influential uh, chain in this ecosystem, which is of course Cosmos Hub. Um, and uh, uh, as as we as we were speaking, there are already two implementations. As I said one is the Go implementation, the other is a uh, Cosmos Wasam Rust uh, contract based implementation, and we have already uh, done successful transfers back and forth of NFTs between these two types of two types of implementation, which prove uh, perfectly that the ICS 721 protocol is implementation uh, neutral. Uh, so it's it has a. Um, uh, different implementations uh, have correct implementation of the uh, different language. Uh, we have different teams uh, implement the same protocol, or same protocol using different uh, language platforms. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and so, I think you are you are the creator of uh, ECS 721, right? Yeah. So I think yeah, you you can clearly show us why it is important to have a standard in the interchain ecosystem for NFTs because uh, it really can create a problem of fragmentation of uh, NFT standard and uh, so it is a feature that definitely uh, requires experimentation and I think uh, this is also why we have here uh, Susanna Evans which is uh, the IBC product lead and uh, if Susanna can also introduce herself uh, for. Uh, explaining uh, why it's very important to have uh, a standard for the interchain for NFTs. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, this meeting uh, is uh, the, the, the focus, I mean, the, one, the most important, uh, I mean, purpose of this call uh, specifically is to explain to the community why we are uh, uh, putting up this proposal uh, for uh, asking funding support from the Cosmos Hub community pool. Uh, that's why I try to explain the, the fundamental importance of this ICS 721 protocol that will be tested in the first phase, which is uh, what we are applying the fund for, to uh, to make sure that the protocol is as correct as uh, and and uh, robust as ICS ICS seven uh, ICS twenty. Um, so yeah, I think that's the background for this uh, for the protocol itself, uh, its current implementation status and. Uh, uh, the the rationale behind uh, the the fund request. Okay. 
Thank you, Ethan. This is, was uh, clearly a deep explanation. Susanna, can you also introduce yourself and uh, explain uh, the connection with IBC and uh, Interchain FTs? Ah, sure. Yeah. Um, uh... <laughs> oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, yeah. I was just going to speak. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. And yeah, as uh, Rob mentioned, my name is Susanna, and I'm working for the ICF um, as part of the IBC team. So we're specifically focused on IBC Go, which is the implementation that's used by all of the Cosmos chains that are currently IBC connected. Um, there's lots of other work going on in IBC, not just within our team, but we're specifically focusing mostly on the transport layer and uh, token transfer. And we also have interchain accounts. Um, and then I guess the question was, why is uh, interchain NFTs important for the Cosmos ecosystem. And I guess uh, IBC launched maybe, uh, how long, it was over 18 months ago now. It's coming towards two years at this point. Um, and the first uh, kind of use case for IBC was token transfer, but that's really just kind of touching the surface of what IBC is all about really. It just um, enables like a whole plethora of other applications, but uh, non-fungible token transfer was the first thing uh, that was implemented. And so expanding the kind of capabilities of IBC through non-fungible token transfer is an important application um, and something that um, Haifeng has been leading uh, with Bayanji. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, so yeah, it's just like another important core primitive that's gonna be um, enabled by chains using IBC. Um, so yeah, I think that's the high level importance of uh, this application, I think. Thank you. I think uh, I think it is important that the community that uh, doesn't have uh, a deep knowledge of uh, interchain NFTs understand that uh, we are speaking about an uh, interchain NFT standard because uh, there are multiple uh, NFTs that can be developed in the interchain being uh, an ecosystem of sovereign chain with the custom tender main chain. So it can really lead to fragmentation and uh, APANG is bringing uh, the first uh, of its kind interchain NFT standard with the ECS721. And it is important to uh, bring standardization around uh, this uh, uh, specific standard. And uh, I think it is also important uh, to understand uh, why uh, we need uh, a game of NFTs, uh, why we need to test it and uh, especially coordinate with uh, multiple uh, current, with multiple NFTs chain uh, currently in ecosystem, like Stargates. I think that also Stargates will participate in this uh, game of NFTs. Uh. So, Aifeng, can you can you maybe explain uh, how does uh, the game of NFTs will work and uh, how are the game of NFTs needed right now to uh, to move it forward this specification? Uh, sure, <clears throat> uh, it's a very good question actually. Uh, uh, interchain NFTs are more complex, more complicated than interchain uh, fungible tokens, uh, in the sense that. In the protocol itself, we in the protocol itself, we don't we, we have to address not only the token information themselves, uh, uh, but also the the uh, class uh, metadata info as well. Because when you when you look at the ICS seven two one the the protocol itself, uh, when you look at the packet data, it transfers it, the token denom and the amount, and basically that's it. But for NFT. It has much more information. It's much richer information set than, than fungible tokens. You, uh, first, it, it, people understand very well that a, a NFT token belongs to a certain NFT class or an NFT uh, a, a collectible or collection. And when you think of uh, in, in terms of uh, smart contract, in, a, in 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 terms of smart contracts, then uh, every contract, every e, uh, ERC seven to one contract represent it represents a class of NFTs because the, all the instances, the, the tokens you, in, you create in that uh, contract have the same set of metadata, follows the same metadata format. So in, in the ICS 721 specification, we use the term class, uh, collect, collectible, a collection, and a contract interchangeably. Um, so 
So when you transfer a, a non-fungible token from one chain to another chain, you don't you not only have to transfer the token info them, itself, but also the class info uh, to which the, the info about the class to which the token belongs. So we were speaking about uh, the importance of uh, having this game of NFTs. So if you if you can, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. I'll, I'll just pick up from where I left off. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, so what what I was ex trying to explain is that the ICS seven to one protocol is by nature more complex than ICS seven uh, ICS twenty because it has to pass more information, it has to manage more information on all the participating chains, and it also has to pass more information between chains. Uh, any NFT to uh, non fungible token or token for short uh, for short. Uh, has off-chain metadata and on-chain metadata to manage. And the class to which uh, NFT belong to also have some, has some meta class level metadata to manage. So, uh, when, so when we design the i7 to one protocol, we have to make sure that the necessary information is encoded in the packet data. And for, for, so enough information is available to the receiving chains so that tokens can be uh, constructed, can be minted uh, correctly in the destination chains. Uh, for example, um, a lot of the uh, digital art oriented uh, uh, NFT collectibles, they um, for inter uh, to, su to support inter uh, interoper interoperability, usually they conform to some kind of off-chain metadata format so very similar to what OpenSea has specified. Uh, usually it's a, a read-only JSON file stored uh, off-chain uh, that has a predefined format. Uh, but for other uh, NFT applications, not just art, digital art collectibles, for, uh, for example, like a NFT rental marketplace, uh, we, we also need some on-chain metadata stored at the... Um, Either the class level or uh, even the token level. For example, the uh, the, the rental uh, the the rental rate. I mean, uh, collect uh, to be collected by the the original owner, uh, things like that. So uh, and uh, and when you when you add in the com complexity that uh, the, the, some chains in the Cosmos network use Cosmos some uh, virtual machines and other chains use uh, native modules. And they have different ways of managing these uh, token level metadata and class level metadata. So how how we make sure that the specification has enough details and the clarity to make sure that whoever implements uh, this specification using different language or different uh, uh, technologies will uh, still have the can be can interact with each other correctly. So we spend a lot of time uh, in a community to coordinate uh, the, the creation and, uh, and the finalization of the specification. It actually took us uh, almost 10 months, maybe uh, 10 months, to have the first version of specification emerged by the IBC, IBC core team. And as we are gearing up for the game of, zone, game of NFTs, uh, as the GoLand implementation team, we uh, had we had very frequent interaction with uh, the other few teams in the community that use Wasam uh, smart contracts, and we have to work out a lot of the issues about uh, what, what I just mentioned: the management and co communication of uh, token level and class level metadata uh, in a specification. So. Uh, that, as that that's basically the uh, wh why we we have this um, uh, we put a lot of effort into the specification and in its implementation in different languages. So uh, that basically tells uh, tells us the complexity of this uh, implement uh, this uh, standard. So that's why we need to have the we want to focus uh, the whole phase the first the first phase on. Trying trying out the uh, the protocol in near uh, in in like a real world uh, setting to make sure that the protocol is implemented correctly in the GoLand and Rust smart contracts and to make sure that 
these different chains using different implementations and settings can work together uh, using the same protocol. And uh, during the testing, hopefully we can uh, find the uh, nuances in implementations and to, to maybe adjust uh, either the specification or implementation. And hopefully we can find some bugs in, in, in either implementation so, so that before we can put this, as I said, it's a very fundamental uh, ICS standard, uh, which enables the interaction of uh, a whole set of uh, tokens, uh, it's a non-fungible tokens in our ecosystem, we, we have to be sure, we have to be doubly sure that this protocol uh, is implemented, is designed and implemented correctly. So that's why we need this game. I mean, uh, because it's not just about one chain, it's about multiple chains and using different, potentially different implementations of this, this new spec. So that's why we need this game. So. Thank you, and I think uh, you pointed out uh, uh, an important uh, an important solution because uh, this uh, this game of NFTs will will also solve uh, problems uh, that can be generated by uh, by having multiple specification. And uh, if I'm correct, uh, you also have been uh, the did the first uh, NFT transfer uh, interchain NFT transfer uh, on Iris Network, and. Uh, it uh, it was using uh, uh, interchain accounts, right? Uh, you mean the uh, this IC the IC seven two one doesn't really require or depend on the interchain account, but of course you can use these two application level protocols to, together. I mean, at the application uh, layer, I mean, user can choose to use them, combine them. And so basically, once you have this transfer uh, for uh, the community to understand, uh, you basically will be able, uh, for example, to move uh, uh, an NFTs from uh, Iris Network to Stargates or uh, Omniflix or uh, whatever chain in the Cosmos ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we yeah, also and adopt, you, we actually yes, also right. adopt or borrow this new newly added feature of uh, this memo field from SCS uh, 21, uh, SCS 20, so that uh, uh, in the in middle layer, I mean, uh, people can develop a middleware. I mean, it's also an application layer ICS standard uh, so that they can process this, uh, whatever people put into this memo field to uh, enable some kind of uh, application layer enhancement. Uh, for example, so automatically transfer an NFT from one chain to another and list it in, in, in the destination chains uh, NFT marketplace, something like that. Yeah, I think this is uh, absolutely a much needed feature in, in the interchain. And uh, I think this will also improve the security. Maybe Susanna can, uh, can speak a little bit about this because uh, uh, having uh, uh, many, many specifications can lead also to security problem. And uh, Susanna, do you think that uh, in the interchain ecosystem, having this standard will help improve security and maybe also create a new product, uh, product uh, opportunity. Well, I think the, um, the interchain standard for NFT transfer, I, I mean, it's, a, it's been specified and it is an interchain standard. Um, that's clearly like a new product feature in itself. So yes, definitely it's new opportunities there. In terms of security, I, well, I, mean, I think the point of the incentivized testnet is to make sure that this specification, when implemented, is as secure as possible and working correctly, as Haifeng already mentioned. Um, so I guess the whole point of the mm -hmm. incentivized mm -hmm. testnet is to ensure that we have like the best security guarantees possible and any bugs or problems are picked up uh, in this incentivized testnet phase. So I think in terms of security, uh, that's kind of one of the factors for wanting to run an incentivized testnet. Um, I, did, I, I guess it's the question a bit more around if having a standard improves the security of the application. Um, and I mean, yes, it's just... Um, it's a bit more of a solid engineering process to specify and then implement. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I, is that, is that covered the question? 
Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah. meaning uh, from uh, the user perspective because uh, it can be difficult for you to, for user to navigate uh, through uh, multiple wallet, multiple uh, way to interact with NFTs. So having a standard, especially this coming from the app, can actually help the user and especially adoption because uh, it is very important for adoption that uh, we offer to user the most simple uh, uh, solution to. Uh, interact with NFTs, that, uh, that will be definitely one of uh, the main features uh, of uh, the crypto ecosystem uh, looking forward. Yeah, and, well, uh, sorry, yeah. I, I guess like in terms of having a standard, it just means that everyone that's buying into the standard can use this application. And that's clearly like much better for UX. And that's likely why um, this standard was also made with the ERC721 standard in mind as well, given that NFTs are, but like we can't ignore that NFTs are massive in Ethereum as well. So being able to um, interact with their standard and be compatible with that as well is clearly very important as well. And it's just better from a user perspective. You're likely not really going to be uh, thinking about the spec on that level. You're just going to be thinking about moving your NFTs around uh, through your wallets and stuff. And so having a standard that multiple chains are buying into is just going to make that user experience way better for you as a user. Yeah. And, and also uh, something I want to add is about the, the specification is uh, it actually we borrowed a lot of the same uh, principles from ICS 21, uh, 20, uh, like some of the desired properties of this protocol, like pre preservation of non-fungibility, which means that only one instance of any token is live across all the IBC connected blockchains. So we'll make sure that you cannot have two in active instances of the same NFT, I mean, living in two different chains. I mean, if the protocol, uh, if all the chains particip particip participate chains implement the protocol correctly, and that, that's, that is one thing that we'll, we'll test in the game, right? Make sure that this property is maintained. Um, and, and also like all the per permissionless token transfer symmetric, uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric property and fault, fault containment, all these uh, uh, desired properties uh, of ICS 20 will be uh, maintained in, in ICS 7 to 1, uh, which of course we will also test um, uh, in, in the game. So, yeah. And also, the, the, there is uh, some uh, du during the uh, write up of the specification, we have some discussions about the metadata management. Because I said this is one aspect that is much that is more complex than ICS twenty, uh, and the the uh, and I think the community reached reached an agreement at the early at, uh, I think in the, at the early stage of the specification, which is uh, for for the first version of the specification, we want to make it. Uh, simple, uh, simple enough so that uh, implementation will be easy and um, less of, uh, of pr um, prone to error. So that we'll assume that uh, the off-chain metadata will, the, will the, the immutability of off-chain metadata will be will be guaranteed by the source chain. Uh, but in terms of on-chain metadata, uh, different applications. Uh, di different application chains that interact with each, each other that depend on uh, certain uh, fields, certain properties in the on-chain metadata, they can decide on their own whether they want the metadata, on-chain metadata to be updatable, I mean, down the street. So, so these are some things that uh, we, we will also test out in as, a, as some of the games, um, uh, competitions in, in this game of NFTs. So it's it's very flexible. So um, the assumptions are uh, based on is, uh, the community consensus at the, at this moment, and in the future we will uh, hopefully we will upgrade these uh, this specification based on. Um, the experience and, and the lessons learned during the actual use of the specification in, in real world scenarios. And we, we may decide later to, to upgrade it to, to make the off-chain metadata uh, mutability management uh, more complete or um, provide richer uh, feature capabilities in, in that aspect. Uh, okay. 
Thank you. And uh, I think this is also the right time if there is any community member that have question, I can uh, jump on the call or uh, make a question in the comment section. And uh, and uh, also uh, one thing is that uh, I want to highlight about uh, this uh, this game of NFTs is uh, that uh, the community will also be able uh, to uh, to cover and follow the, this event and participate, uh, and so understand better uh, all the dynamics around uh, the interchain NFTs. And, uh, how it, uh, and how and why it's important that we have uh, a standard uh, in the interchain ecosystem, IBC ecosystem. Also, one thing that uh, I want to I wanna look a bit deeper is uh, with uh, uh, Susena, is uh, uh, when we will have uh, this, uh, this sort of uh, standard and uh, we will have uh, more testing and... Uh, how how it will uh, will uh, we will coordinate with uh, with the chain? We, it will be uh, through documentation or uh, how basically we will raise awareness about the standard and push uh, for adoption. So I mean, just just to preface, I've not personally been leading uh, the development of this application at all. So it's been the responsibility of Haifang and Bianje. And they've been coordinating with Juno, Stargaze, Gravity, Bridge, uh, as, uh, and probably other chains, I'm, I'm sure, as well. Um, so it's uh, we will, of course, support in their adoption efforts, but um, I'm not like personally leading the project. Um, I guess encouraging adoption, having more visibility um, of this interchain standard is going to help adoption. And that's one of the points of this incentivized testnet is to let people know that this functionality actually exists and that they can start using it and start developing their own products and features like using this standard and, and product. Um, I mean, there's a few NFT zones already in the Cosmos, um, which would clearly have a um, use case for the application, but then expanding upon that, uh, I'm sure Hey Feng probably has some more ideas, um, but yeah, I, I haven't like personally uh, planned the adoption rollout. I guess this is like the first step, um, and it's maybe maybe Hai Feng has more insight on yeah. that. Yeah, so so it basically that that's why I think uh, we we divide the game in two phases. The first phase is to test out the, the correctness and robustness of the protocol implementation itself. And the second phase will be focusing on, it's, it's a hackathon. It will be organized as a hackathon. Uh, and the teams uh, from the Cosmos ecosystem are welcome to join to take advantage of the existing implementations and build applications and tools uh, on top of that. Um, and we will have uh, funding support from these, uh, uh, I mean, uh, co-sponsoring teams uh, like uh, Iris Hub, uh, Iris uh, ICF, uh, oh, no, uh, uh, Iris Hub, uh, uh, Gravity Bridge, uh, um, Stargaze, Juno, Arc Protocol, and 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 maybe our uptick uptick as well, right? So these co-sponsors will uh, provide funding support, and we'll we are also in contact with uh, some invest investment uh, crypto investment companies uh, teams. Uh, who have shown so, so far a uh, strong interest in uh, providing funding support for, for some of the winners of the second phase hackathon. So that, that's part of the, the uh, business development and uh, uh, rollout plan. I mean, it, we, we want to get that started, in the effort, get, get it started uh, in a second phase. So, um, so that more people, more teams, more developers will uh, uh, get to understand uh, the the protocol, how it works uh, during the first phase, uh, and uh, we will want to attract a lot of application builders to build a creative, uh, innovative applications. And on top of that, um, I, I and I think uh, we uh, very similar to the, the uh, game of chains. Well, we will we are in the process of setting up a. Uh, website for the game of NFTs as well. I mean, that web website, hopefully we will uh, make it a sort of a uh, hub where different teams, development teams interested in N NFTs, innovations, especially interchain 
uh, NFT innovations uh, can um, uh, use as a reference point for useful uh, development tools and information and requirements and st things like that. Um, yeah, and I, I think, I mean, maybe the, the best thing is to, uh, I mean, so one of the success criteria for this game of NFT is to uh, make this new standard ICS 721 uh, well known in, in the Cosmos network. Um, and so, so that we can uh, keep attracting interest from various uh, entities from the ecosystem. I think this is a, a very important point and um, it kind of summary what, uh, what will be this game of NFTs because uh, it will basically a test of uh, the ECS 721 and also it will open to new opportunity for the ecosystem for uh, more people uh, to understand and use uh, this uh, standardization. And I think yeah. maybe it will also happen that a new project will born from uh, this kind of event because it happened in the past. So it also helps adoption of the interchain ecosystem and also help uh, the hub itself to uh, kind of have this position of uh, funding the main development uh, around uh, uh, this specific uh, use case of NFTs. So maybe, I don't know, I, I'm trying to imagine uh, what will happen with this uh, standard, maybe NFTs aggregator, specific wallet. There are really many use cases that could burn from uh, an event like this, and uh, it will be definitely very interesting to see, uh, to develop. Huh? So, I think, thank you so much for uh, your explanation. You really did uh, a great job to explain uh, all the parts of the event, uh, the NFT standard, and why it is important uh, for the ecosystem. Do you have uh, any last word to add or uh, any last talk about it? Um, yeah, uh, I think that's um, that's about it. Uh, if, if people have questions uh, that I can answer, I'll be happy to answer the questions. Sure, so uh, let's wait uh, a couple of minutes to see if there is any question coming. Uh, maybe also, Susanna, do you have uh, any last word that uh, can summary this conversation? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I would summarize it as saying um, NF cross-chain NFT transfer is has similarities to non -fun to fungible token transfer, but the packet data has many more fields. It's a bit more complicated. Um, therefore, it seems fitting to have an incentivized test net, which is really going to stress test this feature. Um, so that's what the whole point of this proposal is, is really to make sure we have higher security guarantees, find any bugs, make sure it's working as expected. Um, and it's kind of beneficial for the community to stress test the feature. Getting as many people involved in incentivized test net generally always going to have positive outcomes. Um, and it's really a useful primitive for the interchain ecosystem. Okay, thank you, Susanna. And uh, if there isn't uh, any question coming, I think uh, we can close the conversation. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, Aifeng. I think uh, this has been uh, extremely helpful to, to the community to understand the upcoming event and the upcoming proposal on the hub. And uh, I'm personally looking forward for it. And uh, thank you, everyone, to participate. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thank you very much.